What kind of electric car strategy does BMW need? Do shareholders need to see in order to get your shares moving the same way, for example, we saw Volkswagen shares moving, or dare I say it, the same way we've seen Tesla shares moving? Well, first of all, we make our strategy uh, following customers and markets. You know, I think there's no direct link to, to, to any shares. Of course, we think our, um, our share price is undervalued. Of course, we do that because the potential of our strategy is very large. But let's look at these two cars, the i4 and the iX. Coming in the same year, we bring the i4 even three months forward because there's a large market demand, specifically uh, here in Europe, and, uh, but also in the United States and, and China. So it's a, the, both global products, and they're right in the heart of BMW. I've driven them many, many times, and I'm convinced they're the right cars for in the right time and the answer for customer needs. You know, the i4 is a real BMW with can uh, turn corners very, very quickly, very sporty, very good acceleration, and of course, with the with the with the with the quality of BMW customers um, expects. And the iX is um, from the from the same league. Uh, it's a it's our first full electric uh, SAV we have, and the 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 SAV segment is the biggest segment in the world. So with these, uh, with, with, with this uh, double hit, um, if I may say it, I think we, we hit right in the heart of customer demand. Yeah? And we are, we are very progressive about what we can, what we can um, achieve there. In 2023, these two cars will play also a big role that in 2023 we have 90% um, of our electric cars, fully electric cars, uh, in all segments from the very small car segment all the way to the super luxury segment. So these two cars fit into these uh, big volume rich uh, volume segments. So the when I was a kid we used to call it the ultimate driving machine of course and uh, growing up I had a poster of the M3 I think it was the E36 M3 on my wall and um, it's what every kid wanted. Now the new M3 apparently um, drives better than anything you've ever built, but the look really divides people. What's up with the giant kidneys, Oliver? You know, you know, BMW's design was always controversial. You know, we had large kidneys, we had small kidneys, we had wide kidneys. And actually, we enjoy that people talk about our new uh, design language we have here. And believe it or not, after a first look at it, most people really love it. And a BMW is not for everybody's taste. But the people who love our cars, specifically the sporty drive cars, like the M3s, M4 drivers, they actually love it. And um, we now see the car more often in normal traffic. You know, it's, it fits very well into a very modern design language. And uh, we enjoy that people talk about it. And, and uh, most, a vast majority, um, uh, congratulate us for that very courageous step in our design language. Uh, we've seen some horrible numbers for European car sales across the industry, but you've had some great numbers out of BMW. I think in the first quarter, uh, sales up about 25%. Why or how have you managed to avoid the chip shortage that's hitting everyone else? You know, you know, with our product family coming up, and that already started mid last year, the, of course there was a little COVID as well, but the fourth quarter was a strong quarter uh, for us. It was the best quarter we ever uh, had at BMW from October onwards. And that continued in January and February. And, and you rightfully said it's, it's more than 24% our increase compared to the year before in the first two months. Um, but that is a result of a very thoughtfully um, managed product lineup all over the world. And um, the chip shortage you, you mentioned, so far we did not have any factory stoppages. We cannot exclude, of course, that this might not happen in the um, in the next couple of weeks or months. We cannot exclude that. But we have a very detailed, very balanced uh, um, supplier management. And until now, uh, knock on wood, uh, we, we didn't have any effects. So 
you know, with this advantage, I wonder why the shares have underperformed almost all of your peers. I keep coming back to this because I was playing with the uh, with the graph in, in my Bloomberg. Even if I look at the period since March 23rd, or if I look at the period since you stepped in August of 2019, if I look at a five-year period, BMW shares continue to underperform Volkswagen, Daimler, General Motors, Stellantis. What can you do as the CEO to help boost that valuation? Well, first of all, look at today, you know, we had a share increase uh, in the European markets uh, today by more than 4%, 4%. I think that is a, that's a first step uh, towards a, a, more, a more balanced valuation. And of course, it always depends if you compare share price, when you start, what's your starting point in that comparison. I think um, um, in the last uh, year, uh, we increased our, our share price by, by more than 100% meanwhile. Um, and uh, I think we are on a very good way. And the second thing, I think it was not so clear what the strategy is after the I3. We started with the I3, uh, the, the electrification of the I3 in 2013. And then we took some time until the markets were large enough to supply them with the right products. The time is here and now, and we will have by 2023, 12 ele fully electric vehicles. And behind me, you see the iX and the, and the i4 will come also, also this year. So I think it becomes clearer now to our investors what, what is our long-term strategy. And that is topped, of course, um, by our ambition to have until 2030, 50% in the European markets, at least, um, of BEFs um, in the market. And that could be even more. And we build up that flexibility that we could follow the markets whatever specific markets uh, um, um, develop into. Um, we will have, in Europe, you, we have 27 markets. We will have fast developers and we will have slow developers. But we will be responsive. In two years' time, let's just assume there is a market who, who uh, makes it very difficult for combustion engines to, to, to operate. We will, we will be fully capable of making in all segments um, make a product offering. And I, and I think that this becomes much more clear what our strategy is. And I think the flexibility we invested a lot into comes now into play. And I'm, I'm almost sure our investors will recognize what kind of technological strength we have. And um, our hope is, of course, that this will um, in the long run reflect in a fair share price. Is, do you think the perception of your electric strategy is the problem? Do you think, you know, Volkswagen comes out with these massive announcements all the time. We're going to invest 30 billion euros in a software unit and hire 10,000 people. We're going to invest 29 billion in battery plants and put six around Europe. Um, BMW doesn't seem to slam uh, shareholders with these huge inv investment headlines. Is that the problem? Well, well, first of all, already last year we announced that until 2025 we invest more than 30 billion euros into our forward strategy. So, so it cannot be about figures. But we, we are adamant that we think that a one propulsion strategy could be very dangerous because the likelihood that 150, 160 markets in a very short period of time, and one decade is a very short period of time, will converge fully into one drivetrain is highly unlikely. So flexibility is king. And look at our market figures. We are, we are growing much, much stronger than our competition, uh, with, with more than 24% uh, in the first two months. And look at our, look at, look at our performance, and um, we, gave today a positive outlook for the year 2021, despite effects of still COVID coming in, um, and uh, uh, despite the effects that uh, we might have a chip shortage, we are, we, our product strategy is very robust and follows the markets. And I think that is a very unique strategy and measure us on our results. That's all I can say. Oliver, as we bounce out of this COVID pandemic, what does your demand picture look like, especially for battery electric vehicles? I think 
Um, Volkswagen is less ambitious now on BEVs in 2021. What does BMW's order book look like for BEVs in 2021? Well, very good, actually. You know, you know, we has, we still have since more than eight years the i3 in the market. We have the Mini Bev in the market. We have now, in 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 Europe and China, the iX3 in the market. Later this year, we will have the i4, the the iX, and that will that will that will that will uh, double actually the volume compared to 2020. So we are, if you might call that bullish, it is bullish uh, that we double our Bev volume this year compared to last year. When I look at all of the major automakers in the world and imagine the motto, think differently, BMW is to me the obvious partner for an Apple car. Um, I know that in the past, your predecessor had talked with Tim Cook about it. Would you work with Apple to build a car or would you rather compete against Apple to build a car? You know, we have a very strong product strategy over, over, um, um, over three brands, Rolls-Royce on the very top. We have Mini on the low end and in the middle, this big, strong BMW with a strong product portfolio, which we add now 2025 with a new electric, fully electric architecture we call Neue Klasse. Um, I think we are, we are, we are really strong and, uh, Everything else is speculation, and I wouldn't like to comment on that uh, because it's, it's speculation, but not by us. Yeah. What, about, what, what about building um, software, building your own operating system? I mean, not every car maker is going to have its own operating system. Would you be open to working with others? Um, you know, if not Apple, would you be w willing to work with um, other German car makers to uh, create an, auto, uh, uh, an operating system right. that has less costs? Well, the operating system of a car is a complex thing. And right now, with the, with the iX behind me, we are launching the BMW operating system 8. So it's the eighth version, and we have our own operating system. And for these cars, of course, that will lead us um, in the future, and that is a that is a conglomerate of corporations we have there. Nobody is building all alone one, one, one operating system. You will always have partners in there because it's so complex. And of course, uh, the next level of operating system uh, being launched with the Neue Class in 2025, we will do that with partners. And we could even imagine that in specific areas of the world, we will regionalize like that. And uh, I, think, I think it's good advice to partner it, but the control of the overall operating system in a highly complex system of a car, the control of it will be always in BMW hands. You uh, have an electrification strategy now for your major brands. We're going to see it uh, across all of your offerings. And just myself as a motorcycle fan, I'm wondering if we're going to see it on uh, two -wheel, wheel vehicles as well. Do you think? Um, BMW Motorrad is going to be building a, an electric GS? Well, well, well we have uh, the, the CO4 concept, as you see. We, we have uh, um, um, the City Cruiser in the market. Um, we had the K17 uh, many years ago with, with, with i3 batteries. The electrification, specifically in the smaller segment of our, of our product lineup, is the future, and, and, and we are already seeing how customer uh, uh, demand increases. So yes, uh, BMW will, will become also, BMW Motor will also become electric, yes. So do you know about plans for a GS, for an electric GS? That's the king of the motorcycle world, right? I mean, that's the big seller that everybody who knows what he's doing is riding. Um, that right. seems to me something you can right. put a battery in. Right. That is a specific segment. It's high volume, you know, and it's a it's a cross. It's a traveling motorcycle. Um, we currently don't have plans to specifically electrify that version of um, of um, um, of type of product uh, because it, the 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 disadvantages of the electric drive for that specific type of traveling bike um, is obvious. So we will start from the lower end, and then we will see. 